This is really an amazing day. It's definitely one of the one of the coolest things that I've ever really been a part of. I mean, to see this sort of go from an idea a couple of months ago to a full skeleton mounted um, behind me uh, within you know just a matter of weeks it is really incredible to sort of have pulled this animal out of the drawers and dusted it off only um, two and a half months ago to see it being put together all in basically in one day in front of your eyes it is really incredible and it's uh, it, it's a really special day I mean this is the largest dinosaur um, ever to be put on permanent display in Canada and it's something that the ROM is going to be known for for a long time so it's it's really special to be right here as as it's happening um, to watch sort of the, the birth I think of, of a really important piece for the museum. Behind me the crew is installing the dorsal ribs, the section of ribs that attach to the vertebrae between the hips and the shoulders. Now this part of the animal, the trunk part, is in fact the shortest part of a sauropod. The neck and tail are by far the longest part. If you look at the total length, um, the length of the, of the trunk between the neck and tail occupies something around 15 to 20 percent of the length of the entire animal. The neck and the tail both stretch well over 30 feet, whereas the trunk itself is maybe only 10 feet long. The, the mounting of the, the Barasaurus poses a number of challenges, the, the same challenges that are part of mounting any dinosaur except on a much larger scale just because Barasaurus and, and other sauropods are just so much larger than every, most every other dinosaurs. Um, they contain the same, basic same number of parts um, or the same number of bones. Each individual component is just um, much larger than normal dinosaurs and therefore um, those problems associated with, dinosaur, with uh, mounting dinosaurs are that much bigger for mounting a sauropod. This skeleton, this Barasaurus skeleton, was originally collected in 1914 by crews from the, the Carnegie Museum. Uh, it was acquired by the ROM in 1962 through a trade organized by uh, Dr. Gord Edmund. Um, it was acquired, I, I believe, with the intention of uh, putting it on display in the 1970s gallery renovations. And it was acquired actually in the same trade as we got our Stegosaurus uh, for. We sent a few duckbills, uh, a few duckbill skeletons to the Carnegie, and they sent us up the Stegosaurus and the Barasaurus. Um, the Stegosaurus got mounted immediately and was a familiar part of the old ROM galleries. Um, the Barasaurus had become forgotten over the last few decades and it wasn't until um, just a few weeks ago in um, September 2007 um, that we realized really what we had with this skeleton that uh, all, of, all of the bones that had become scattered throughout the collections and thought of just to be isolated sauropod material um, we discovered they were all part of one single individual skeleton and it was a skeleton of a rare sauropod, Barasaurus.